Hello everyone. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where or when you are. Last time we just got the spacer beam. And I don't know if you noticed, but we also got the charge beam, which allows us to charge up our weapons for a uh, more powerful blast. So this elevator here will take us down to Norfair, which, as you may remember, is a sub-volcanic zone. And there's an upgrade we need to get here before we can challenge the boss in Brinstar. An element that's introduced in Super Metroid is that of extreme heat, and in those zones, the only way to protect ourselves is to get the Varia suit, which we've gotten before in the other games. Um, that's not the upgrade we're actually getting right now. That room, I, this room I was just in, was one with a temperature too high for Samus currently. I hope today finds you well. Um, I've been giving some more consideration to, uh, possibly playing some of the 2D Legend of Zelda games. Um, I think uh, Link to the Past might be a fun one to do. That was the Super Nintendo Legend of Zelda. Um, I think uh, and I think you'll agree that I'd rather really not do the original Legend of Zelda because uh, doing so I may end up dying a lot in that game and that can be frustrating for all involved really, so I think I need to destroy all the enemies in here. Oh, there we go. That was a lucky shot. So I have the high jump boots, which is what I came here for. And we're going to be heading back up into Brinstar. So I was watching my first video of this, and you might notice there are some parts where it looks like I'm uh, maybe like fast-forwarding through things. I'm not actually fast-forwarding. What's happening is... Um, The software I'm using to record this game uh, skips a few frames every now and then, and when Samus sprints, it really likes to skip frames, so what's happening is basically when Samus is sprinting, it just looks like I'm fast-forwarding through the game, but um, I'm not, and I don't know if that bugs you, if it bugged you at all, if you even noticed, but... Um, yeah, just thought I'd explain that. I saw where we need to go, but I think there's a there's an item we can get, possibly, or at least a save station, which we should use. We haven't saved in a while. Um, if we jump into the air with our charge beam, we can kind of do a proto-screw attack. Of course, it's not as powerful. And it's, for, it's good we got the spacer because 
It's almost like a shotgun blast when you think about it. Fire's kind of a scatter. So right here we have Fake Kraid, which makes a return from the original Metroid. This hidden room will restore our health and missiles. Just our regular missiles, I think, not our super missiles, but that's okay. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear the controller, but it makes some nice little clicking sounds every now and then. Yeah, look at this guy. Toast. So now you may remember Kraid from the first game, and you may remember what he looked like. He's gotten a bit of a makeover. Now Kraid is fought using missiles if you shoot him in the eye. That will force him to open his mouth. Okay, we've already got him down. Pretty good. He's turned kind of this olive color. And if we shoot the claws that he flings around, we can gain a, some. We can gain some ammo or health back. Oh, looks like we got him up. So good for us. Despite his size, Kraid's kind of a pushover. Though he does put your platforming abilities to the test more than anything. So now we have the various... Suit. Interestingly, Samus is usually depicted in her various suit. Who knows why. So with that, we can actually head into Norfair. Now Fake Kraid will actually continue to appear even after his larger, his bigger brother has been taken care of. Now that we've defeated Kraid, this door is actually unlocked. So let's see what it has to offer. Oh, these things can only be killed by bombs. But they, they're pretty vicious. They latch to you and consume your health. Another energy tank is good for us. This thing was also in the original Metroid, although it wasn't quite as frightening looking or detailed. Now, something that makes this Metroid a little bit simpler and more intuitive, maybe, or 
maybe more nerfed to some people is um uh, uh it's kind of clear to see where you need to go next because um basically if uh if it's impassable with your current uh armament then uh Basically that tells you, oh, I need to get this upgrade and then go here next. Um, that's a complaint a lot of people have with the current Legend of Zelda games is that it takes away some of the uh, some of the excitement of knowing which item you're gonna get next uh, because the world, the progression in the game world is kind of uh, based on finding these items in a certain order. I don't know if that makes any sense, I didn't explain it very well, but um, basically you can tell which items you're going to get and where it is you need to go, which kind of eliminates some of the, uh, I guess, excitement and uh, challenge of, um, I'm sorry, I keep falling into the lava here. And the seahorses don't like to be shot. Back to the bubbles of Norfair. So sooner or later we'll get the ice beam. That'll be useful to us. Uh, in the last game, in Metroid 2, I had said I thought that game was the only one that had spikes as a trap. I was wrong. And if Super Metroid has them, then other games probably also have them. Just uh, goes to show that um, I don't know as much as I claim to know. Fact check more often, I guess. And down here, there's nothing I can get just yet, although those guys like to drop some goodies for us. And here. We can't get through just yet. Oh, so like right then it might have looked like I was fast forwarding, but I wasn't. It was just Samus sprinting. Which I guess in a way is like fast forwarding. Nature's fast forward, so to speak. Hmm. Let me do this middle door first. middle door. That sounds like the less popular neighbor to Mordor. Okay, there's probably something in there later, or it could just be a health and ammo farming room. So this video I'm going to leave at 20 minutes long. Like I said, the first video was half an hour because um, there was a bit of introductory stuff and uh, that didn't involve me playing or speaking really, so. But now, since it's just the main game really, 20 minutes seems like a good amount of time.
so if any of you watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because I did, I watched the whole first season, and I liked it. Um, I kind of think it's funny that a lot of people, you know, they like the Avengers, they like Joss Whedon, they like all those kind of Marvel movies, but a lot of them just will not watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I guess some people I've heard actually just have kind of objection to the show, because I think the, they either thought like the, the writing wasn't good or the actors weren't great, but I um, thought it was good. It did a good job of telling a parallel story to the uh, events you see in those movies. Um, Clark Gregg, of course, comes back to play Agent Phil Coulson, and he's as good as he ever was in the movies, if not better. His role is much more humanized, and uh, that's something I think um, will bring a lot of viewers back who may have watched the first few episodes, or first episode. He has a charisma about him that's, uh, oh, whoops, that was a mistake. I don't have the upgrade for that. But, um, yeah, I would recommend watching it if you haven't, and if you like the uh, Marvel movies. And, um, especially if you liked, um, the new Captain America movie, there are the last few episodes in the season, actually, really expand on that movie's story. Okay, there seems to be a little bit of lag going on. There's quite a few background animations. Whoops, I just wasted a super missile. There we go. Oh, anyways, yeah, Ancients of S.H.I.E.L.D. really expands on the events in the uh, Winter Soldier. Which is interesting, because it kind of tells a story of um, the politics within S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, I think it's a very involved story. Alright, so the speed booster will let us run really, really fast, and we're actually going to run so fast that anything that's in our way will be decimated. This will allow us to get to some places that we couldn't before. We're actually going to head back down here. It is about 20 minutes now, although that's only on my clock, and I did take about a minute to set up this recording, so we'll just go a few more seconds, I think. Um, have something to get. Here, there's one more upgrade I think I can get before I leave you all. Yep, 
Yeah, the game slowed down a little bit because of um, either because I'm recording or because, like I said, there were a lot of background animations going on. There should be an upgrade through here soon ahead. there. Okay. Yeah, man. Oh, jeez. Full of fire rats. Whatever those things are. Alright. So now we have our ice beam. And that is a good place for me to bid adieu. So, stay tuned for more. Thanks, everyone.